It's me. <laughs> so you did totally have a little bit of a Gerardo next to him was just laughing his head off. So it's great. We were all having a good time back there watching a future creator pass and all of the for all permissions that go with it just vanish. <laughs> <laughs> It happened. <laughs> uh, thank you all so much for that extraordinarily warm welcome for being in this room. Uh, thank you for being excited and, uh, and I hope that this has been a really good week for you and it's filled your heart the way that it's filled mine. It's been really wonderful. Thanks, thank you, and thank you for bringing your, your own thoughts and expertise and selves to this room today. Uh, so I want to talk about uh, like the biggest question in all of creation, be like not creation, not like the Lord's creation, but in terms of like, cute, like making stuff. And I don't know if we ask it very much, and if we do, then we sort of like, instead of saying, like, like actually examining it, we just, we just sort of like, it's, you know, it's just a magic, it's a magic thing that happens. It's like, it's, you don't want to question, don't look too hard at it. It's the muses, it's, it's just like my brain is something special, and I bleh. I think that this is a lie. I don't think it is magic. I'm just, I might just be being overly analytical, which is something that I tend to be. But I think that if you look hard at this question, there are legitimate things that you can find there that are useful. And, uh, and I guess I should tell you what the question is. It is, how do we decide what we make? <laughs> oh, I, I'm afraid to look at it a little bit because I'm like, that's scary. What well, might I find if I actually look hard at this question? Uh, but like, why do we make the things that we make? How do we pick the things that we think are going to be successful? What is that metric? What does successful mean? All that stuff sort of goes into this, and we decide all the time, like not only like what topics we're going to cover, not only what channels we're going to watch, but every edit in a video, every like in and out of a hi hat in a song is a decision that we're making creatively. And what's informing that decision is it's a black box, it's a mystery, it's very weird. But I think that there's stuff that we can tease out if we look hard at it. But I don't think that we do. I think we oftentimes don't talk about it at all for two reasons. Well, I think four reasons I ended up with in the slideshow. So I'll just retcon that. <laughs> uh, the, the big one is, uh, is that we don't want people to take it from us. If we find something that's working, uh, you go with it and you run with the thing that's working. Uh, so as an example, <laughs> if you make a video about Keanu Reeves and everybody's like, I love that, 323,000 views, boom. You make another video about Keanu Reeves. And don't tell the world the Keanu videos are doing well. Because don't like tweet, everybody, Keanu videos, go now, because you'll diminish the value of your Keanu videos. So you don't necessarily shout to the world about that, but beyond just like a format or an idea that's working, if you have a like a, a rubric that allows you to create things that are successful over and over again, that's so valuable. You have the goose that laid the golden play buttons and never found <laughs> So I think there is actually a selfish component to why we don't talk too much about this, but I want to talk about it today because I think it's valuable. I trust you not to do bad things with this information, and I think that it's kind of unethical to sit on information in a world where we should be opening up creation to as many people as possible. So, let's talk about, oh no, fuck, number four. Uh, <laughs> we also don't talk about it because we do fail sometimes, even if we have really great systems. Uh, failure still occurs, and so maybe our systems aren't as great as we thought that they were. So this is a thing that I've tried to do f for 12 years, <laughs> continuously failed at it. Even though I think I have a pretty good system for deciding what's going to be successful, I think it's going to be successful. I tried. Uh, and we all have those videos, we all have those channels, we all have those ideas for things that we think are going to do really well. And then just So uh, maybe our systems aren't as good as we think they are, and we don't want to like poison people with bad ideas. So that's another reason. I also think it's because this is a black box. It's not super conscious. And we have all these little variables in our heads when we're thinking about what might be successful and what might not be. And oftentimes we're not thinking about them directly. They're just in there informing stuff. But that doesn't mean you can't tease those things out and look really hard at them. And finally, this is sort of related. You, uh, you have this, like, these, these sort of surrogates for it. Like people say, what do you make? I just make. I just make the stuff that I want to watch. Like, okay, great, but why do you want to watch it? Like, that's the same question. Like, if you, like, what's good? I just make things that I think are going to be, yeah, okay, fine, this means nothing. 
But like, it's the, like that's what we think is happening, but we have to look harder at this question. And so I want to feel very bad for people who translate. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, Wait, how do we decide what we can do right there? Um, let's go through some things. Now, there's going to be one thing, maybe a little bit too, on this list that are bad things that are informing our decisions. And I don't mean bad like bad for the world, I mean bad for the idea. Um, so, uh, like a thing that's like, I, 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 I want to make something like this, and it's being informed by this variable in your head, but it's actually not servicing the idea. So we'll get to that. Most of these are actually going to make the idea better. Those ones actually make the idea worse. Let's start with the good ones. Is it easy? Really important. Oftentimes I don't look at this, but if it's, uh, if like, so there's like a scale of easy, um, and, and there's also a difference between the difficulty of acquiring a skill and the ease of creating something from it once you have acquired that skill. Like, it's easy for Julia Nunes to make amazing noise at you because she has spent a lot of time acquiring that skill. Um, so, in that same way, uh, YouTube spawned a lot of genres that were easy to produce once you acquire the skill. Beauty tutorials are a great example of this. It's not easy to do makeup well, but it's fairly easy to make a video in which you do your makeup well once you know how. Gaming videos are the same way. It's not easy to kick ass in Fortnite, but it is fairly easy to make content out of that once you have that skill. So understanding that like ease of production matters a lot, and that's why we ended up with some formats that are really based in simpler kinds of format. Vlogs, another good example. Once you're good at talking fast, <laughs> then it's easier to make a vlog. Um, and there's this spectrum of ease. Like there is something amazing that's happening outside the window, you can pull your, your phone up and you got a viral video the next day, versus like Avengers Endgame, and like you need five hundred billion dollars. Now another important thing is that like I I can't make Avengers Endgame. If my idea is Avengers Endgame and that's never been done before, it's a great idea, except it's not possible. Nobody's gonna give me half a billion dollars to make a movie. Also, I don't have the skills necessary to do that. I don't know how any of that stuff works. It's a bad idea because it's impossible. So it's very important to think, like, is this a good idea? Sure, except it's impossible. Thus, it is a bad idea. So you gotta figure out where on the scale of easy you are. Is there an existing <laughs> hungry audience? Okay, the, the unsullied are an existing and hungry audience for Daenerys Targaryen. Uh, but also, I found that there was a lot of people who were super into making, like, seeing some Game of Thrones content during that last stretch of Game of Thrones, and so suddenly there was a lot of people making Game of Thrones videos because the audience was there for it. Yes, a little bit because they love Game of Thrones and they want to talk about it, but most of that content was being made because people wanted it. So you are looking for who wants the stuff. And like, I want it to be, I just want to make beautiful things, but ultimately, I want to make beautiful things people are going to watch. And so I'm looking for ways, like places where there's an existing audience. And I did this, I made a bunch of Game of Thrones videos, and they got from like 50 to 500,000 views, and it was really fun, and the comments were pretty neat. <laughs> <laughs> What's your expertise? Are you really good at Fortnite? Are you a jazz pianist, and you can like write accompaniments to viral videos, like that guy who does, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. No, no, you did. Oh, yes. No, no, you did. That guy? Yeah, like, he's good. That, like that genius, like he had that skill ready to make fairly, for him, easy videos. For me, impossible to make. Are you a lawyer who has like a questionable hobby? <laughs> picking locks. Have you seen this? Uh, the lock picking lawyer. I don't know why I watch these videos, but I find them enjoyable. <laughs> uh, he has that expertise and he's turning it into a thing. Building up a skill is very different and very valuable from making the content based on that skill. Now we're going to talk about the platforms because Ooh. it matters what the audience wants, it also matters what the platform wants. Yep. And that's somewhat similar because the algorithm is of course in, like, you know, very connected to what people are clicking on and how much they're watching the stuff. But what does the platform want? It matters. And I'm going to give some examples of how it matters. This is the new YouTube Studio Beta. And this is a video that I uploaded that didn't do very well. Down 37% over average, ranking 9 of 10 of my most recent 10 videos. Oh, and it says, tell me more. 
find out what you did wrong, basically. So the, the platform is now giving me data. YouTube is saying, here, like, look, this one isn't doing this well. You need to alter your strategy to have some more success. Click on something more, here's what we find. Uh, basically, it's saying, we're showing this video to people, they're not clicking on it as much, so we're not showing it to people anymore so much. Uh, and then it says, while changing a video's title or thumbnail may help attract more viewers, not all topics have the same appeal. So it's saying this isn't just a title thumbnail problem, this might be a topic problem, which is totally true and totally legitimate. Change your content to make it better for the platform. That's basically what they're saying. Also it says, in any case, be mindful not to create clickbait that overpromises on what's actually in the video. They're obviating, they're like, like expecting that I'll see this and I'll be like, I need a new title and thumbnail. So like, I'm gonna escalate and try harder and harder to get people to look at the video. I'll say, if this does work, I uploaded this video about two weeks went by. It wasn't getting the views I wanted. I like, really liked it. I really liked what I did with it. I wanted to get more views. And that those two weeks went by and I changed something. And it was good. It was a positive change. It worked out well for the, the success of the video. Um, here's what I changed. Here's my original thumbnail that I'm super embarrassed to show. <laughs> It's not 2014, Hank. What the hell is going on? <laughs> like, this is two different faces. There's a logo. There's a big building. And the background is busy. And there's a title on the thumbnail. And who's this man with very good makeup? I, it's just, like, I know Bernie Madoff, maybe, but probably not. I changed it just to this. <laughs> this the video is called, I think, um, you're probably a victim of the largest theft of all time. You show a picture of Walmart, people are like, what? <laughs> Do Walmart steal my money? I'm like, if you work at Walmart, yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, so that's what the video is about. Um, and this created a question inside of people's heads that they wanted answered. And it wasn't manipulative, it wasn't a lie. It was saying, like, here's, there's like an interesting thing here. Come watch with me and learn about it. And also, you, capitalism. <laughs> Can the idea pay you back? So there's this sort of like a, like a, like between ease and like gaining audience, there's like, you can make something that costs, you know, that makes $400 million. Like you can make $400 million on Avengers Endgame and you still lose money. So like it's very important to have like the difficulty of the project line up with your ability to monetize the project. Stuff isn't going to get made if it can't pay for itself. That's the world we live in. And now we live in a world where more stuff can pay for itself. Back when I was a kid, there were so many audiences that weren't having content made for them because the audience wasn't big enough or the members of that audience didn't have enough money for advertising to be worthwhile for them. So, for example, Bloomberg, which is like a financial news publication, needs nothing like the audience of USA Today in order to make a lot of money. Bloomberg has rich people who read it. You advertise to rich people, they spend much more money. USA Today is for average people, they have much less money, advertisements are worth less. It's the world we live in. It means that rich people get much more stuff made for them than everybody else, but that's how it is. Uh, so can your content pay for itself? And that means that when you're having an idea, like there are ways that you can have a video get a million views and it doesn't pay for itself, and a video that gets a thousand views does. Because if you think about, like I have a friend who makes content where he basically builds like little circuit boards and they can do different cool things if you're a nerd. And then you, he sells those circuit boards for like, and they're like pretty expensive, they're like $250 to have the whole kit. And then like, it doesn't matter how many views that thing gets, if like 10 people buy a circuit board, he made $3,000. Did I do the math right? Two, two thousand five hundred. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, so like this is this is like a very different uh, value proposition. I people people who make content in the financial space can make their money back much faster because there's much better endemic sponsors, stuff like that. The money matters, and like it's one of the variables that we consider when we're making content. I'm gonna go away from my time. I apologize. <laughs> now we're starting to get into like a little bit iffy territory. Is that content familiar to an audience? Is it gonna be something you can easily pitch and people will understand when they hear about it? This is also really, a, it's more of a fertile way to come up with a new idea than it is a good way uh, to actually make a great product. But it doesn't actually, it doesn't hurt the product, it just doesn't help it, but it's a great way to come up with good ideas. For example, you take something familiar and you do a little spin. Like, change the demographic. You say, it's a cooking show, but it's for nerds. I love Alex, he's amazing. I love watching him make croissants. I don't, with this 3D printed croissant maker, I'm just like, yes, make croissants all day, Alex. 
I will just watch. Uh, or you say a really familiar format like an interview, and you add pain to that yes. interview. <laughs> you know, a whole new world of a uh, very successful show. All you needed to do was hurt people. <laughs> So, uh, my last thing is that, I'm so sorry about the slide. Uh, the team inside show searched for knee pain for an episode, and found this eye stock photo image. I just love it so much. I couldn't find a good thing to put behind this, so here's an old lady's knee with her face in it. Uh, but, this is a terrible reason why we make stuff. We make stuff because we want to feel legitimized. And that's always going to be there. I'm not saying, like, get rid of it. It's there. But it's not a good reason to create because it doesn't make the end product better. Um, it's, it's fine fuel if you need that fuel, but, like, it's not good for the end product. Legitimate, what does it mean? It's just, like, it's my, my former dreams. It's what my parents think matters. It's what I think other people think matters. It's not about the content itself. It's just about, like, external validation, which I get we need. I absolutely understand that. And so that it's fuel, and like you're looking at that, but it's not gonna make the content any better. So, the last thing that I think is a really important bit to put into your calculus is, is it good? So none of this has been about whether it's good for the world. And I don't mean like, I don't mean like good, like perfect art, and like it's gonna be in the Smithsonian or whatever. I mean, like, all these things have been about whether this thing is going to be self-sustaining, is it going to take care of it, that's how we know if an idea is good, if it can be, sit on its own, and be a successful thing that takes care of itself, and that, that ideally lets us continue making it without being a drain on our lives. But this last thing has to be considered. You add all those other things up to decide whether that idea is good, and then you multiply by one or zero. If it's a good thing for the world, you multiply by one, it's the same thing, if this is going to have a destructive impact on the people who are watching it or on society at large, you multiply by zero, it's a bad idea. And as creators, we are always going to be watching as people get success by doing things that we recognize are destructive to the people who are watching it or to society at large. This is just going to happen. We're going to watch as they do better than us. But ultimately, those people are the failure, not us because they are operating under a flawed system of like what, of, of a flawed definition of what success is. Because we are not here to get the biggest possible audiences or make the most money. It can't be about that. It can't be about that. We are here to create value for people and to create, whether that's belonging or humor or education or just relaxation, Whatever it is, we are here to create value for people, not some arbitrary number. And if it's destructive, that value isn't being created. And if there's anything that I would like to leave you with at this end of this wonderful VidCon, it's if we are adding value to people's lives, we are being successful. So thank you all so much for coming out here. I've had a wonderful